Yeah, so uh, I, I will start with introducing myself. Uh, uh, I'm an ISO engineer working at Wanda, uh, is a startup. So recently I built a game uh, using uh, a Sprite Kit and 3D Touch uh, technology. So just gonna share with you guys about that and uh, following up with uh, my colleague Tim, uh, he did some cool animations using keyframes. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, SK view, uh, sprite key view, sprite key scene, then update methods, then SK action. Uh, just the basics of a sprite kit. Uh, by the way, how many of you works uh, worked on a sprite kit actually? Oh, sh so only. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I guess I can ask Sub again. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Basically, SK view. Uh, SK view is the subclass of the UI view, which shows the content, uh, whatever content inside the sprite kit object uh, for that particular view, and also update the frame uh, with the with the current time, and it also manages the transition between the scenes. Uh, then scene, you can think of scene as a as a movie scene, like where actor comes and go uh, for that particular scene. Uh, and it, it, in terms of programming uh, and in terms of gaming, it actually uh, uh, globally characterized for the physics simulation uh, for the uh, SK physics bodies. Uh, then how, how a sprite kit actually update the frames? Uh, so you, you all know that uh, Apple has this golden standard of uh, updating frames at uh, 60 frames per second, right? So the, the frame rate is actually 1 by 60, which is like 16.67 milliseconds. So Sprite Kit uh, update uh, or renders the every frame uh, in, in uh, every frame uh, with this update method. Uh, so whenever you whenever you update uh, your scene, uh, this method update update with current time is called and uh, whatever you want to change in your view you can uh, do th do in this method but uh, let's say your your game is paused for a moment or let's say you you put the app in a the background then the sprite kit current time is actually running is still running because it always take the current time uh, so in that case uh, let's say you again open your app you won't get the the frame rate same as uh, when when you pause your game because now the time has elapsed. So in that case, uh, what Sprite Kit does it uh, like not Sprite Kit. What we should do is uh, take the frame rate, take the time back uh, to the moment where we pause, uh, which we can calculate uh, by like uh, taking uh, the the time between difference between two frames, which is like one one by sixty. And we can check if the time since last update uh, is greater than one. Then we can uh, change our time since last update to one by sixty, which is like frame rate, and uh, pass it to our last update time interval uh, object uh, instance, and then update the uh, sprite kit, update the scene. So we will see that uh, in the code later. I, I, I'm going to show you the code for that as well. Uh, yeah. So basically. Uh, we do this uh, for like avoiding the frame rate drops and all. Let's say let's say there is a spaceship in your uh, in a in a view. There is a spaceship, and let's say you touch on some point. You are building a game where you uh, move the spaceship when, whenever you touch on the screen. So uh, when you touch on the screen, uh, your spaceship move from that point to the touch point. So in that case, uh, uh, you you won't see the Jumping of the uh, spaceship. If you uh, do correct calculation, is in this update methods. Uh, so SK action is actually used for the deterministic uh, calculations or actions. Uh, for let's say you want to move for your node constant with constant velocity from point A to point B, then uh, you can generally uh, use with SK action. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to use. Uh, okay, for physics bodies, uh, so every every uh, object in a sprite kit view is defined as a node. 
So let's say your button button is actually a node uh, is is defined as a node in a sprite key. So and it has a texture property. You can set an image of that. So for for graphically design uh, all the the complex images is is difficult actually. So people just sorry. So people just use the uh, a rectangular or a square object and then put an image to it. So let's say your image is circular, but your button is a square like 30 by 30. So in that in this case, uh, let's say you have two buttons and you want to define the collision between them, uh, but you can't define because the the image is circular and uh, the edges are like square or rectangular, whatever uh, is your physics body is. So in this case, uh, how you define the physics body around around that object is is by the frame of that uh, that that button itself uh, let's say the button is 30 by 30 so you go by th 30 by 30 otherwise you can do calculation for like complex graphics let's say is a circular ball of radius 30 or something so you can define your physics body uh, same as uh, radius of 30 but th that's going to be a complex um, so we have like two kinds of physics body here uh, volume based uh, bodies and age based uh, age based bodies so edge based bodies are basically like let's say you define a flow in your game uh, or like let's say tiles view all these are considered as edge based bodies so edge based bodies are like they never interact with another edge based body even if you make a contact with them they they never uh, collide or they don't follow the physics rules but uh, for for volume based bodies uh, they actually if you set the is dynamic, is dynamic property to true for them, uh, they do follow all the physics uh, rules like gravity, friction, collisions, and impulses as well. Uh, okay, let's talk about the geome geometry of a sprite kit. So you know that in, in our UI kit, the x and y coordinate start from the top uh, left corner of the device, uh, which is like zero by zero, and th then you do your calculation, whatever, wherever you wanna place the frame. But in a sprite kit geometry, uh, is it follow the conventional mathematical graph, which is like from the bottom uh, left corner. Um, so whatever calculation you do, you do from uh, that that point of view. Okay, so let's jump into the code. So, okay. I can show you guys the game as side. Okay. So Okay. Okay. So let's start from the game view controller. So here basically we uh, add our SK scene, uh, SK view, sprite kit view. So uh, from the basic start, when, when you create a project, you just uh, select the project. Uh, I can show you guys. Let's say you want to create a new project. Okay, so you select game. 
the next and you can name it uh, it will create a game for you uh, with with skview and sk scenes as well so okay <coughs> so here basically we define uh, we we always put uh, our game view inside a view controller so our sk view is all, all always lies inside the view controller so you can define uh, is the top view uh, is as actually a class of sk view then uh, you can present the scene by using its uh, uh, file name uh, and you can set its properties uh, few things uh, to note here like uh, you can you can define the scale uh, scaling for the scene uh, to aspect field to, re to cover the full screen and uh, also uh, you, you can choose to show the frame per second and shows the node count uh, like how, how fast your frames are displaying per second uh, and how many nodes in that uh, particular frame are displaying in a view uh, okay these are th this is how you represent actually a game scene which is very uh, simple uh, okay let's let's dig more into this okay so this is uh, our game scene uh, so this is your first method which is going to be called when you uh, move from your ui view to sk view uh, so so what actually i'm doing in this method is i'm setting up all the nodes uh, which i have defined in my uh, like game scene uh, this is like a ui uh, you can you can programmatically code it and also define it here and give a reference in the sk scene class so okay uh, i'm defining my nodes here and also defining the physics worlds for them so the gravity and the contact I, i'm also confirming uh, this class to the protocol of sk physics contact because uh, i want to uh, implement the method when like two physics bodies uh, co comes in contact uh, i'm also using the emitter emitter particle which uh, you can use uh, a sprite create particle file uh, so apple gives you few choices of uh, particles like magic rain smoke so the one i have used is smoke uh, which is in my emitter folder so shit no smoke yeah so this is the one i'm using uh, you can define the properties for this here like uh, with with what rate uh, your particle should emit and what angle it should emit uh, you can simply define the properties here uh, it is pretty easy to use Oh man. Okay, let's go back to game scene. Yeah, so this is how I add uh emitter particle for my my two uh I, I can show you here. So if you see this so so this is how i added uh, the smoke particles to the uh, players okay so actually this game is uh, based on 3d touch so i i made it made this game for like a particular target audience of 6 and 6s and uh, 7 uh, but to just make it work i, I just uh, use a slider for iphone 5 or 6 users uh, okay now let's get back, uh, get uh, to this touch methods which are like uh, which okay so sprite kit provides the uh, the same low level touch methods as your ui kit does so you can start with uh, touch begin method which will be called like whenever you start touching your screen the view uh, the the okay so the 3d touch part so how what do you guys think like how many lines of code to be used for 3d touch like just a guess 
Yeah, okay, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so it's just one line of code, uh, which is like maximum possible force uh, of touch, which you can see is, is only available for the 3D touch or Apple Pencil. So, 3D touch is the 3D feature of Apple uh, iPhone 7 and 6s, right? When you force touch, yeah. So the maximum force touch. So yeah, as you can see in the documentation, like it's only available for um, 3D touch devices, uh, or you have an Apple and a pencil. Okay, so. So how, how does this logic works here is like uh, whenever user applies the maximum force, so you, norm you normalize the force and uh, okay, I can show you on the screen. Like this one, I, when I press like harder, so it, the, the, the balls got split and when I I, I press very gently, then uh, it comes closer. So it's all because of the force. It's all because of the force which I am applying on the screen. Uh, and by normalizing it, I just uh, take the value from zero to one. So I can I can define the position of my uh, player one and player two. So in the game, if you see, uh, you will feel like your you will feel. Uh, that the particles are going up, but in reality they are like just there, and it's just the illusion of the obstacles coming down, uh, making you think like they are going up. Yeah, so this is just the basic uh, logic for 3D touch I have used here. Uh, then uh, these are the general touch methods, like different events, what, what I want to do when like user ended the touch from the screen, and all. Uh, so yeah, the thing I was talking about uh, to update the time. Yep. Uh, so this method is uh, is really important because uh, let's say you are updating your frame uh, because this method is called whenever your frame is update, up, updated and uh, next frame is get rendered. Sorry. So. Here, what I do is like I check every time, like uh, my current time and the last updated time from for the frame is is if it's greater than one, then I uh, I uh, I put the value for time since last update to one by sixty, and it again uh, start from the uh, very point where I left, so it it doesn't get a frame drop here. Uh, Yep. That's pretty much about uh, the game scene and the the elements, uh, the one you see, how I uh, use on the screens, is like how I add the player. So the player one is is simply a node uh, I use with the image and I defined his physics body. So the is dynamic property for player one and player two is false. It means like they are not affected by the, the physics uh, in your scene, like the gravity, the friction. That's why they, they are always at the same positions, just uh, moving horizontally, that's it. Uh, and the category bit mask, so the category bit mask uh, is actually for every physics body in a game scene, you can define up to maximum 32 categories. Uh, and so for this one, I, I defined as a player category. So both belongs to the player category. And when I, uh, I add an obstacle, so I define them as an obstacle category. Uh, and collision, I didn't use the collision bit mask, but you guys can use the collider, collision bit mask to uh, check whether these particles collide with, uh, with, I mean, uh, with the same category of colli collision uh, bit mask. For this one, I use the contact test bit mask. So whenever your particles come in contact with the obstacles, uh, it, uh, it it did, it will call the matter, which is like uh, uh, which we actually confirm the protocol to physics uh, physics delegate protocol. Sorry, uh, it will call the matter did contact, 
and uh, you can implement whenever these two things are these two things comes in contact so these are the this is the uh, contact test based mass i defined for players like uh, they can come to contact with obstacles or gems gems are like the coins i collect uh, in the game so okay so this is the method where i i uh, add my obstacles the rectangular blocks coming down uh, they are dynamic because uh, they uh, conforms to the gravity physics uh, in the scene uh, the jet position uh, here defines like they will always be behind the scene uh, let's say uh, i mean your jet coordinate is always like perpendicular to your device so uh, defining it minus 1 will keep always them in the be behind every other nodes so these are just the random nodes i defined like small medium and large uh, so whenever i get a random number uh, I, i check the type uh, according to the random number and i i just display them on the view uh, okay so sk action uh, we talked about sk action uh, for the uh, constant ve velocity objects so here i'm using the sk action to move uh, obstacle from top to bottom uh, so as you see uh, like the coordinate for sprite key start from bottom left g uh, corner 0 uh, by 0 so here i defined as a the negative of height and i give a duration of 3 uh, seconds like it will travel a distance in 3 seconds and the new uh, obstacle will come and sprite key is quite good about uh, managing the memory uh, but still you need to uh, remove the nodes which are not displaying on the uh, on your sk view so we need to uh, append a method remove from parent and uh, run this for every obstacle object node actually uh, this is how i add the gem randomly uh, the gems are randomly placed between the obstacles uh, for the so if you see so these gems are randomly placed uh, around your obstacles or between the obstacles uh to collect uh similarly i add the movements for jam uh, which which will be same as as the obstacle movement uh this this method is uh, simply to add a row uh, how i want to add a row my one row defines uh, how many numbers of obstacles and what type of obstacle i can have so i just uh, simply uh, check the row type and according to my uh, random number i just add number of gems and uh, number of obstacles in a row uh, that's pretty much about it uh, yeah and yeah i guess so uh, so yeah this is how like uh, a simple game you can build uh, using sprite kit uh, which is quite easy to use Uh, okay. Any questions? Yeah. What is your highest score? What is my highest score? Uh, is one seventy five. So actually, I, I have put on my uh, app store that earlier I put like uh, whoever can cross three uh, hundred can win some amount of prize. But one of my friend he crossed actually, so I remove that bounty and <laughs> <laughs> place it to. Uh, Whoever cross three hundred, I will remove ads for them. <laughs> yeah. So that's about it. You can download the game from App Store. It's already available. Call it Split Up and Up. Just curious, do you use that? <laughs> 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 well, yeah, because I just want to build it like fast. So I just did this app in like uh, three days. So I just use the storyboard. So you want a game used? No, the storyboard is actually for game view controller because uh, you can present your game scene uh, uh, with game view controller, right? So I, I do some pause uh, scene. Let's say, okay, I can show you on the app. So when I hold, so I show this pause screen on uh, my game view controller. So yeah, but this is by code. <laughs> so yeah 
that's why yeah Copy your right test. <laughs> <laughs> well no such test for you, right? No. I mean, there are, but I, I didn't write any. Okay. So, any questions, guys? Okay. Uh, when you play this game, right? Yeah. Do you, you read up on some game theory or something like that? Because there are some game theories that you introduce in your slides, like the update function. The oh yeah, I mean uh, definitely. I, I uh, went through some tutorials and I, I saw a few examples on GitHub, so I, I got basic idea from there. And yeah, because it's, it, this app is quite simple to build. Uh, and if you if you once you start with Spike it, it you will feel yourself like it is quite easy to catch up on. So your collision is just using that method, that collision big mass. Uh, yeah, okay, so I want to show that, I guess. Yeah, so this is the method actually, uh, did begin contact, uh, so which is defined for uh, two physics bodies coming in contact. Uh, so you can see uh, if my, my contact body B, uh, whatever name you defined uh, in your game scene uh, from your uh, UI view editor. Uh, let's say okay. This one I define here. Obstacle the name is for this kind of object. I define name as obstacle. So yeah, I, I check uh, if the body is is obstacle. Then uh, just uh, show game over screen. Yeah. And if it's GM, then add add the score. Yeah, that's simple logic. So for this collision, right? Can yeah. It be in any shape, or does it be? Is it only standard square or a shape? So yeah, what I said earlier about collision is like, uh, let's say uh, you have a complex shape images. So generally, it's quite hard uh, to define collision between them because uh, the shape can be like uh, anything uh, in a two D space. So what uh, for our convenience we do is like for that let's say that uh, image is uh, of like in a frame of uh, 20 by 30 sorry so you can define your physics body 20 by 30 so you can check that any other objects comes in that frame not just touch uh, that image but comes in that frame and you will uh, consider it as a contact or collision so this is how generally physics bodies are defined yeah. Okay. I guess that's it. Okay, okay. You you mentioned that uh, for your game, whenever the object goes out of you, you throw it away. Yeah. So here in the game element, uh, I added a movement uh, to the obstacles and gem as well, like. Uh, movements of uh, actions array uh, first is like move from po uh, point x to the y which is like negative of height uh, like from the top to bottom and then i append an action uh, which is like remove from parent to this obstacle so when i run this obstacle the run action of is actually a sequence of actions like first uh, because in an array it always takes from object 1 to 2 so my first action was to move it from zero to the the bottom part, and the second action was to remove from parent when it's like uh, going out of the screen. So yeah, that's why uh, I run this sequence of actions. Yeah. Are you able to do this because since there's X Y Z exit for sprite is actually uh, basics. Uh, it is basically for 2D. Uh, Apple has seen kit or metal uh, framework for 3D uh, gaming. So you can use that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>